to talk to you about a little project that I was asked to do. Um, and I wanted to contextualize it, first of all. Um, electricity prices in South Africa is actually one of the lowest in the world. However, electricity and energy is actually quite a big, uh, has a big presence on the GDP. We energy, 15% of energy is attrib attributed to the GDP. Uh, we are 10th in the world in terms of the amount of electricity that we produce and ESCOM produces, ESCOM is 11th on the list in terms of how much sales they make in the world. So energy is quite a big thing. And the issue that we are confronted with as of late, where everybody woke up, was that we all of a sudden has gone beyond our yield. What we consume is not what we produce in terms of energy. So population, economy, growth of economy, and so on, has now gone beyond what we, can't, what we can't sustain. So all of a sudden, we've got to now produce a series of power stations to manage what we manage our requirements. So ESCOM has put out 350 billion rands to produce a series of power stations. And that's a lot of money. But the question is, who's going to pay for that? It's you, and it's me, it's your kids, my kids, their kids. We're going to pay for that. Because we are consuming so much, hence the load shedding. It, the, the systems cannot manage it anymore. So not only has it got a financial impact on our pocket, but also, as we all know, power stations predominantly work on burning fuel, burning carbon and then emits carbon dioxide. This is not very good for us. What happens in the next two, three decades? 25 years of coal, worth of coal was found in Pumalanga. But what happens after that? What are we going to do then? So ESCOM is going to look at, or they are looking at, alternative ways, renewable energy, hydropower, nuclear energy, but the question is, uh, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Are we just going to consume that all the time, put it on their shoulders? So the alternative is to actually look at alternative energies at the user level. I like this little advert on the WWF website, where they actually look at the individuals and what they're doing in their little roles, their homes, being the superheroes, saving energy, water, and so on. It's quite interesting. So reducing c carbon by 30% is the plan. Renewable energies, both from ESCOM side and our side, is on the cards. So how does this manifest itself in terms of building, in terms of spaces that we use how, do, how can we use it? So this came in the platform of a project that landed in my lap. Because I teach, I interact with a lot of students, a student who referred me to one of th their friends, and they had City Power as a client. And because ESCOM and City Power is basically telling us, hey, you need to serve, conserve energy, so we are doing it as well. So they came to me and said, well, would you like to do this project? It's an energy efficient house and it's an exhibition house. It will be built, demounted, taken away, and it will show us how we can actually live as your normal home users, housewives, husbands, house husbands, children. How can we actually live in a house that doesn't necessarily look like clay houses or straw homes or anything? It's trying to develop a lifestyle. So we had to create an image. But also what was quite interesting about the idea of this house was that it's such an amazing opportunity to create something that will be put up and taken down. So it's actually like a little test. And if I make a mistake, they'll take it down. They won't see it. If I mess it up, no one will notice. So it's like a little laboratory. It's like something that we'll, we do, we test it and see if it works or not. And this is actually a, a lifelong sort of program that I have is to continually test things as we go along. 
So the client took me to the site in Innisfree Park, and we walked along the flat, in San on the flat grassy parts of Santon, um, and it would be coupled with a four-day exhibition of how we can look at energy saving techniques, whether it's appliances, building, materials, and so on. And as I was taking the photographs and they wanted on the flat part, I turned around, I did a 360 pan, and I looked at the hill, the berm that actually faces as you come up Grayston, going to Sant and turning left, just off the M1. I said, but why can't we do it on the hill? Because conceptually, if you're trying to advertise energy efficiency, you're going to eventually put up a sign, but why don't a building be the sign? Can't we create a building that is so unique, so intriguing, that it can begin to actually intrigue people? So we started to develop. Karabu and myself started to conceptualize in my AAA grade office, my backyard. And we produced these sketches. And we were jamming away like we were drummers and guitarists, just playing music. We were drawing and we were creating. And we were chuckling. Like, imagine they actually bowled us, you know? It would be amazing. So there you can see visions. The vision was people walking up to this little pavilion, this idea of something that is quite unique. And conceptually, if you're going to advertise something that is a house, we started with the premise of it mustn't be a house. It mustn't look like a house because no one's going to come to the house. It's got to not look like a house. So what does it look like? But coupled with the fact that it's going to be a temporary structure, it has to be sensible. You have to prefabricate it in a prefabricated way, put it together, and take it apart. So there's a sensibility about it. So we conceptualize it, put it onto CAD, 3D CAD, and we started to develop the concept. Given the terrain, the fact that it's on a slope, one wants to actually make it quite simple to put it in in the ground and take it out without having to disturb much of the ground, which is an ecological reason. But also the fact that if you put slabs straight onto the ground, cool air actually starts to interact with the slab, and cool air then comes through. So putting it on the stilts, having a little bridge, also started to play with this idea of this magical little place that you walk onto, like a little UFO that landed. It then developed, and it needed to get a bit bigger, we started to develop, little materi develop materials that we can start using that was energy efficient, and we started to play around with it. And ideally, um, it, was a formal, it was a lot of a formal thing, but then started to actually create a hanging, sort of like a hull of a ship, where people go and sleep at night, and then you would live on the top. And then the client that came to see me, who was the, who has City Power as a client, his request was, we want to live in the house for two months. And we were going to test it. We were going to see how comfortable, comfortable it was, how hot it gets, how cold it gets, how much energy do we conserve. That's even a better idea. So we have little props, live props, living in the house. So coming back to the site, we started construction after designing it. And as we went through the design process, we, started, we hit a couple of stumbling blocks. If you can create a light structure, that is easily mountable and demountable. Is in essence, you're actually trying to create energy and you're trying to create, you're trying to conserve energy. And when you heat a space, you want to keep hold of that heat or cools. So, you, in fact, you have to start storing energy or heat somewhere so that it can start to dissipate through a space. But you can't do that through steel. So we decided to use concrete. The concrete floors were going to start to hold on to that heat. And then we started to work out, but how can we do that? Do you use air? Do you use water? And water is much easier to transfer heat from place to place than, heat, than air. So we started to use PEG pipes that is like a massive radiator in the slab and start to radiate that heat from the bottom up and if you're on the lower ground, from the ceiling down. So it was very important that there was no floor finishes on that, on that slab. But we had to reduce the weight as well. So we couldn't use heavy materials on the walls. So what material did we need to use that was both light and had a good insulation value? And we started to look at styrofoam, because styrofoam is essentially 20 kilograms per cubic meter. And it gives us very good our values. 
But coupled with that, along with the assistance of the manufacturer, technically we started to evolve that skin along with the floor. But where does the heat that we generate come from? What can we use? So we started to play with this idea of using geothermal heating. And basically, if you see those red pipes in the top right, that's pipes going from the first floor slab, from the lower ground floor slab to the next one. And basically, that pipe runs 100 meters down into the ground, into a hole that's the size of a pot plant. And essentially, we're using 17 degrees of geothermal heating and cooling to keep that water in that pipes at a 17 degree constant temperature and running it through a heat pump which works like a refrigerator, which just cools and heats, steps heat up and steps heat down. Now, I'm no mechanical engineer, but this is all concepts that for architects, we have to grapple with. We have to understand the science behind these things. So we've got that sort of, you can cool and heat the slab, but we have to insulate this walls. And I find that internationally, people are more afraid with this idea of insulating and R values and U values and keeping heat out and keeping cold out keeping warmth in. It's a new concept for us to be able to seal your windows, to be able to use the right material for your window frames. Like in this case, we use UPVC window frames and double glazing that doesn't conduct a lot of heat. But also, above, over and above the Styrofoam used galvanized sheeting, a one-way vapor barrier to allow to control the vapor, and then a mesh, that yellow, um, this yellow uh, material is a mesh that then starts to hold a polymer, which is almost like a slurry, which actually you, in, you, 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 you mix the paint with it. And then you get a waterproofing condition over the styrofoam. So your finish, there's the PEX pipes coming out of the slab. So the finish is actually a styrofoam board, 60 millimeters, but it's coated with a very rough coating of, water, of a waterproofing, which is also your paint. Lightweight screeds to reduce the loads with styrofoam balls in them, waterproofing, but also using low-level lighting, low-energy-consuming lighting. All these things are very easy tricks that we can use just to reduce the amount of heat in a space. So the building gets, starts to get developed. The building was meant to take three months. It's been three years. But this is a logistical issue which, from a pro bono point of view, everybody threw materials at this project. Everybody was excited. The team was saying, let's use this material. I know someone who can bring us that material. And logistically, it's a bit difficult to actually expedite a project when there's no money flowing because it becomes not the priority of the people supplying the materials to actually get the work done. But yet it's been a passionate project for everybody. Everybody, all the consultants and all the contractors have enjoyed the process so far. So just to take you quickly through the building, it's the site, there's an entrance off the bridge, there's a guest loo, a little kitchen, living space, dining space, living space, internet station, and on lower ground, in the, like the hull of the ship, the lower portion that hangs from the frame, is the ablution facilities, sleeping pods, which is really just two double bunks in each room, and it's literally two by two meters, and then a relaxing space. On the top are 18 solar panels, producing about 20 kilowatts per hour, per day. Now keep in mind we could have created a whole farm of solar panels, but it's, not, it's, it's beyond the point. The point is not to show exactly we're going to go off the grid, which we can, but it's to show you that these are the mechanisms which you can use to conserve energy. Elevations, sections, and some final images of the building. And as an academic, one uses these tests, these projects, as a demonstration to the students 
also to take them to the house and show them, look, this is how we can do things, these are alternatives, this thing messed up, this didn't work, that worked, and it's all in the name of learning. There's the last image you can see with the solar panels on, with the PV panels on, and the solar geyser. And in the end of the day, I think what was interesting about this project is not only being related to what's current and affects us all, and not only financially, but also this idea of putting it into something that we can dream of, not just think about it as in we have to conserve energy, we have to do X, Y, Z, but we can also wrap it in a little gift wrap, in a little way that we can conceptualize new ways of living and new ways of conceiving how we can conserve energy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before you go, Thank you. I've been so curious, because uh, I drive past uh, William New uh, Grayson quite a lot, and yep. I see this struck and I've wondered, who's the guy who's done this? And it's quite amazing. I just want to ask you, so outside of solar energy, because uh, I see a lot of people that are trying to, to harness wind, do you think wind is something that we should look at in terms of energy for the future? It's context-driven. Joburg is not very, it's not a very windy place, as you know, mm -hmm. so it's not a good option. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure that it requires to actually develop this, to put it up, what your rewards are is very little. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to look at places along the coast instead. And there are many other ways of harnessing energy mm -hmm. and um, creating energy. Um, this is just one of them. Yeah. There are a series of projects that we want to look into. And sometimes it also comes down to the numbers. How much, are, how much energy are we producing? It comes down to RANDs. It's yeah. almost like a, a test. It's like a competition. Mm -hmm. It's like a game we're playing. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, thanks for inspiring us, man. Thank a you. A token of our appreciation from TEDx or it. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Awesome. That was great, wasn't it?